Hey there, I just saw uh, The Conjuring 3. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, uh, screening, by the way. I always want to say thanks when I'm given an early screening. Uh, before I talk about it, I guess I should talk about uh, my thoughts on the other Conjuring films. Um, by the way, if you're wondering why my skin looks uneven, it's called being pale. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I got sunburns, so it looks really uneven, that's why, but um, that that is the uh, least scary thing you'll hear in this review. Actually, maybe it's not, but we'll see. All right. My thoughts on the uh, Conjuring films before. Uh, the first one, I think I'm in the minority of people that did not like the first one. I thought it was really dull, really not interesting, clearly not based on a true story, but that doesn't affect me much. There's a lot of horror films that say based on a true story, and they're really not. Uh, if anything, that's almost part of the fun. Uh, but I just thought it was very dull and had nothing that new, aside from the clapping scene, the hide-and-seek scene with the clapping. I thought that was nice and creepy. Uh, but everything else I thought was very generic. But I know I'm on the minority in that, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, the second one I thought was pretty good. That's the one um, that takes place in uh, Britain. And even though, again, I kind of doubt how true a lot of it is, uh, it was a little bit more believable. Uh, but at the same time, there was just this creep factor to it. It was uncomfortable. It was, uh, you know, it had the supernatural jump scares everywhere. But you legit felt for the characters. You didn't want to see anything happen to them. So I did like that one. I never did see Annabelle. I saw the spinoff, the second Annabelle movie, which I actually thought was kind of fun uh, and creepy and everything. The Nun, I thought, was very generic, but fine. Uh, so... Knowing all of that, you should know I'm coming into this film series without, like, the highest expectations of it. I mean, at at the most, I think, like, the best films are, you know, fine. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're, like, groundbreaking movies, but, but like, they're fine. And the worst ones, I think, are just kind of lame. Though, again, I never did see Annabelle. I hear that one was really bad. Uh, so now we have this third one. Uh, the Conjuring the Devil made me do it. And once again... It starts with, you know, it is setting up who the, the married couple are and that this is all based on a true story, which, I mean, this film, the climax of this film has an underground, like, sacrificing room with, like, you know, all this occult stuff, and this is under a farm, and, like... <laughs> it ends with someone being possessed and, you know, chasing the good guys down. It's like, fight, fight, fight the possession, fight! And then this evil demon lady comes out, but then she has to be stopped because the possession works the other way. So now another demon lady comes out and the other demon lady turns and goes, no! And the other one goes, Bleh! and then takes her away. You have to know this is bullshit. You have to. And they'll show, like, the pictures at the end of, like, the two things that were that technically make it a true story like you know somebody else arrested for murder or like the recordings of this kid that was supposedly possessed uh so and this isn't a comment on do i believe in supernatural or the devil or goes or anything like that there's just some things you can clearly tell are just movies and the conjuring films are mostly just movies the annabelle movies and the nun take place in the conjuring universe that's like saying well this movie is in the jeffrey dahmer universe we mean the universe this is supposed to be true <laughs> this isn't a cinematic world it's supposed to be true so with all that said uh you have to know going in I, I don't care if this is based on a true story. Like I said, that's almost more of like a fun gimmick. Uh, you know, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Technically a true story, you know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, my takeaway on this film, and knowing what I think of the other movies, this is a perfectly serviceable date film. This is a movie where you go on a first date or second date with, uh, you watch it and, and you cuddle close at the jump scares and at the end you talk about, well, I wonder how much of that was true and, and what it was based on. It says, hey, do you believe in ghosts? Do you blah, blah, blah? It's fine for that. There's not really anything else outside of that. Uh, it's actually kind of dull. And what was so puzzling about that is I was asking myself, why am I really bored by good chunks of this movie because a lot of it I'm saying to myself okay turn your brain off have fun and parts of it I did I mean like there's a scene I think early on where they're trying to exercise this boy get a demon out of him and 
All these bugs and locusts start flying through the room and people are being blown against the walls like the wind, like there's literally like a tsunami of insects in this room and it's based on a true story, but that stuff's fun to me, and I'm like, I don't care. If anything, seeing the base on true story makes me enjoy it more uh, for how corny and over-the-top it is. And there are some scenes that are uh, funny and, and I guess a little creepy, but I was saying to myself, well, why don't I care about what happens here? And I think a lot of it is that the writing for the people in this movie, even though it's acted very well, they usually get good actors for these movies, they do not write these characters in any way that you can identify them outside of what's happening to them. The main dude in this is possessed and, and kills somebody, and there's this trial, and, and the, the married couple have to go, the, the supernatural couple, they have to go and find out what possessed him and how, and, and then the little tricks of it and so forth. And even though the main guy who was arrested and everything is acting his ass off, like I said, everybody really is. They're trying to find some kind of sympathy and empathy that you can have for these characters and something interesting. They're not written in interesting ways. There's nothing about this kid's identity outside of he has the hots for, um, you know, the, the sister of the little boy that's that's possessed. Because, of, you know, of course, they all know each other. It's passed on. It's like, a, it's like a disease, you know, you just pass on a possession to another. Again, true story. And I'm... Um, Watching this thinking, man, if I really cared about these people, I probably would have enjoyed this a lot more. Even the goofy stuff I would have really had a good time with. But a lot of it is them just kind of going from place to place, finding out the past history of one spot or the past history of another person and what their connection was to the occult or whatever. Uh, there's a few trial scenes as well, so... And I, honestly, even the trial scenes, I feel like I could almost use more of them because that would have been more interesting than what they were showing us half the time. Because a lot of it is just kind of a drag. Because you don't really know anything about these people. So with that said, there's some scenes that are still... Uh, creepy enough, I guess I should say. Like, I was never scared in this movie, but there are some scenes where I'm like, all right, I'm a little creeped out about what's in the shadow there or what's gonna fly out at me. And some of the cinematography in this does some interesting stuff, too. There's... So, <clears throat> it just uh, before this... Or, or after this, I should say, I saw uh, Cruella, like, I think the day after seeing this. And Cruella, there's a big shot where you start outside, you go in the store, you go downstairs, and you see her, like, scrubbing floors and stuff like this. It's big, long shot, but it all looks artificial, and that's kind of the idea. It's the fashion world, it's also, and over the top, it's supposed to look kind of, uh, you know, weird and, and goofy. Here, there's a shot that starts outside, like, like a drone shot, uh, during the daylight, and it flies down, you know, these people, they're just setting up how this place works, they have, like, animals, uh, in this home, and, uh, you know, in cages and stuff, and it goes inside the house, you follow them through the hallways as they're having this conversation, and then, I forget if it goes outside again, but it at least goes to the doorway, and I was saying to myself, that must have been a really tricky shot to do, because you have to change, like, the exposure and the aperture. You have to get that super smooth. I'm sure everything had to be dubbed again. You had to watch out for where the drone is flying and stuff like that. And if there was a cut in there, like, using computers or whatever, it'd be... It's very well blended. So there's a few shots like that. There's a few shots where they try something a little different, a, a little new, that, that I did enjoy. But most of it kind of looks the same, sounds the same. It's people coming out going, Bleh! like that, and people screaming and running and finding, again, underground chambers and so forth. And if that's your thing, or again, if it's your thing for a, a date night movie, I think it's fine. This is a good date movie, not really anything else. But with that said, it is still a good date movie. Uh, even the boring scenes, I was kind of saying to myself, you know, I, I bet there's going to be couples that are just going to be making out during these spots, and then they'll hear it, ah, and they'll turn back and watch the movie again. Uh, so that's really what I take these films as. And none of them really make that big leap into uh, these are horror films that we're going to remember years later or we're going to talk about, like The Exorcist or Psycho or anything like that. So 
yeah, I guess there's not too much else to say outside of that. I think if you like the other Conjuring movies, I think you'll like this fine. Again, I don't get too much into them, but this did feel like it's just another Conjuring movie. There's nothing really that new, at least with Conjuring 2. There was something kind of played with. You know, James Wan produces uh, these movies and, uh, you know, has a big hand in creating them. And even though I, I can't pretend like I like every James Wan movie, there's always something interesting in his films, in each of his films, because something new is done. There's some sort of new trick or technique. And I wasn't seeing anything too new outside of visually sometimes uh, the setups of the shots were a little neat. But that's about it. So it, that was a little bit of a letdown. But at the same time, I'm thinking a lot of the other Conjuring spinoffs, there was nothing really that new, but they... They were either a little bit of a letdown or a little bit of a success. Like, that's always what I got out of them. So this is one that I think is right down the middle. It's really a film to see if you're just like, I just want to see something scary and I don't have to think that hard about it until the credits where it shows the pictures. I go, ooh, like, what did happen? In which case you can do your own research and be like, oh, like, this was really off and took a lot of liberties. But that's... Also part of the fun. I know that's kind of the style of it. So, personally, I didn't get into it, but I think there's people that will enjoy seeing it, taking their boyfriend or girlfriend to go see it, and having a good enough time. So, sorry there's not a ton more I can say about it. I didn't get passionately hate it or passionately love it. Uh, it's just, it's another Conjuring movie, and if you just want to see another Conjuring movie, this is a flick to see this weekend. So... That's about it. If you've seen it, uh, please let me know what you think. And also, if you're a Conjuring fan, if you like the Conjuring films or you don't really get into them, uh, do, do you disagree and think the Conjuring films are really great? I mean, they're some of like the best horror films ever made. Uh, or do you think, no, nah, they're passable, but they're great at being passable? <laughs> you know what I mean? So let me know your thoughts and then let me know how this compared to those other films. Because again, I don't really get into the Conjuring movies that much, but I'd love to know people who really do and really like them, because they've made so many of them, uh, think of this third installment. So that's about it. I'll see you next time. Take care.